couple days away from the start of the 2022 World Series. And joining us right now on the HRP guest line to break it all down is the host of Baseball Tonight on ESPN and the play by play voice of Sunday Night Baseball, of course, on ESPN, the great Carl Ravage with us now. Carl, it's Jake and BK today. Thanks so much for a couple minutes. Well, it's a pleasure to be on with you guys, and uh, this is becoming a rite of fall is to go to Houston in <laughs> October for World Series games. No doubt. Fourth time in the last six years, the Astros are here. So when you look at this matchup early on, Carl, just your initial thoughts seeing an 87-win Phillies team match up against a 106-win Astros team. Yeah, and I'm sure, like most, uh, we would look at the number 87 you know, maybe the same way you did the the Dodgers against the Red Sox when the Red Sox won 108, and uh, it turned out to be a pretty good World Series. Obviously, the Phillies are playing better than they did during the, the majority of the season, um, but you're running up against a Houston team that's, that has been the best in baseball and certainly during this postseason has done nothing but solidify that. So, yeah, I mean, I certainly would favor the Astros going in without getting too deep, at least on, on this answer and the X's and O's and reasons why. Phillies are playing well. I don't think they'll they'll get burned by Bryce Harper the way that uh, teams have in the past. I think they're smarter than that. Um, but yeah, really, I think it's exciting. I, I, look, I love the way that both teams play. They put the ball in play. Um, not everything is a home run. There are superstars on each team, and uh, all that I think makes for an exciting game on the field. I'm not sure that the series as far as number of wins and losses by each team is going to be a, a memorable seven gamer, but it's baseball. That's that's the beauty of this sport. That uh, that doesn't that doesn't always favor the team that you think is going to win. Carl, we're super confident down here about the Astros' chances, and it sounds like you think they're going to end up winning this thing when it's all said and done. But just on paper, of course, they don't play these games on paper. But on paper, is there anywhere you think the Phillies have the advantage over the Astros? Or when you kind of break this thing down, do you feel like the Astros are uh, heavy favorites in just about every category? Well, uh, you know. Uh, I understand. Uh, look, the Houston Astros pitching staff and their bullpen is is unmatched and maybe the best um, in baseball, um, certainly top three in baseball this year. But I do think that that the top two in the Phillies rotation, Wheeler and Nola, or I think in the series Nola and Wheeler, and really there are three you know bullpen arms. Depending on how you feel about Eflin sort of coming in, but certainly. Um, uh, what Alvarado has done as a lefty has been, you know, kind of, kind of lights out stuff, and he's really taken another step where the confidence level that Thompson has in him is as, is as good as any reliever in baseball. That being said, their depth can't match Houston's. But I do think if you're asking me where Philly has if not an advantage, they're equal. I think the top two starters are even on each team. I think the problem is for Phillies when you run into – you know, games three, four, and five, uh, where Houston has a big advantage. But I, I don't think Verlander and whoever Dusty decides is going to pitch game two is a lockdown guarantee win. I think the two Philly starters are that good, and I think they're, the back end of their bullpen, their seven, eight, nine inning guys, um, are, are as good as Houston's. The problem is, the bridge between the starters and the other games that Wheeler and Nola, assuming they can give you six or seven, it's really hard. It's really hard for for that to match Houston's. Carl Ravage from Baseball Tonight and Sunday Night Baseball is with us here on the HRMP guest line. Carl, when you look at this Phillies team, how did they get here? Right, I mean, they fired Joe <laughs> Girardi, of course, at the beginning of the yeah. season. Rob Thompson comes in as the interim, and and here they are in the World Series. What changed for this team following the the firing of Girardi? Well, that, that, that's the biggest change, and that, that changed the clubhouse. I mean, we, we had done several Sunday games early on Philadelphia. as They were, you know, people, people forget they won 87 games. They were also uh, picked by many to be a World Series contender, and they finally began to play that way uh, once Thompson came in, and certainly, obviously, late September here in October. What, what changed is, is this um, willingness to play Bryson Stott every day at shortstop, to get over some of the injuries and get Segura's bat in that lineup consistently. Their defense improved dramatically when Marsh went into the outfield. Um, you know, the, the deadline acquisitions all were overshadowed by what the Padres did, but the Phillies made a couple of, of smaller moves that have paid big dividends. Um, and I think we all watched what Dave Robertson did in the last game where they had to take him out after a couple of walks. 
but Robertson, Marsh, Segura, uh, ability to put the ball in play, Harper kind of figuring out what it means to be a DH and, and how to, you know, how to deal with that on a daily basis. Um, and, and the youth movement, you know, remember there was an Alec Bohm disaster in the beginning of the year with three errors. And I hate this freaking place. And I want to get out of here. He's become a solid player, not a gold glove defender, uh, not Alex Bregman, but he'll give you a good at bat. Uh, they're a little more athletic. They don't rely on the Homer. And again, they have those two guys at the top and really good lockdown people on the back end. But I, I think it was the youth movement. I think it was the trust in playing the kids and letting them be letting them grow up a little bit. And then you get some magic here in October with guys like Hoskins after an attention to Walker Schwarber, et cetera. Carl, back to the Astro side. It feels like the one thing Dusty Baker's managerial resume is lacking is that World yeah, Series. 100%. Yeah, look, top 10 yep. in wins, 2,000-plus over the course of his illustrious managerial career. How big would this be for him? I think most people already think he's a Hall of Fame manager, but but besides that, just how big would a World Series be for Dusty Baker's legacy as a manager? Well, he's a Hall of Fame person, um, and that, that's more important than having you know sat next to him on our set of baseball tonight. Uh, you get to know that his ability to tell stories about uh, God, people from Muhammad Ali to Mahatma Gandhi. It doesn't matter. He's got a story and a connection to everybody. Uh, he's he has this unique ability to relate to anybody. He talks about his background, where he grew up some of his experiences uh, over the course of his life that allow him to walk into a clubhouse where you have all sorts of folks from, from different countries who speak different languages, and he's able to unify them. He's smart enough to go out and bring some food in from a particular stop that he knows a player is going to appreciate and make him feel comfortable. He can have a hard conversation. He can relate any experience to basically any experience on the field. Uh, you you know, he could sit there and say, you you know, who was on deck when, when Hank Aaron hit hit 715? That that was me. You know, you know I may be the guy that had invented the high five. He, he just has stories that go on forever. And, look, I'm not sure that there's, a, that there's a formula for how you find or identify the 2022 manager and what you're looking for. But I think one of the – one of the common threads between all of the successful ones is their ability to relate to the player and communicate the, the sort of the vision of the front office. It's not necessarily the language that they speak, but the vision. And he's, you know, he's, I think sometimes doesn't get the credit he deserves for all the dang games he wins and all he does is win. And yeah, I think the world series would be, a feather in his cap. I know he would dismiss it as something significant and and uh, the linchpin to his baseball career. He's got one of the greatest baseball careers from from the day he began to play in the majors, even the minor leagues, uh, to what he's doing now. There's very few that can, if you're going to write a book about a baseball life, match what Dusty Baker has experienced. So, sure, if the final chapter or or one of the end chapters is a World Series title, it's it's only fitting, and I, I'm rooting hard for that part of the story, uh, for him to get that, because I do think it would it would quiet some of the people who, who make the case that people like Dusty or Buck Showalter don't have the ability to do that. That's such BS. Of course he has the ability to win World Series. He's been in them before. And this is a crapshoot when you get here. But I, I, I'm sure it would it would be a wonderful feather not one that he needs in order to ride off to the uh, vineyards and feeling real good about himself, but it'd be nice. Carl Ravage from Baseball Tonight and Sunday Night Baseball is with us here on the Wheelhouse, joining us on the HRMP guest line. Carl, if the Astros win another championship here, their first since 2017, an untainted title, what would that do for the legacies of so many of these players in this franchise? Yeah, I I mean, that's an interesting question because I – I know that that stuff still lingers, and I know how sensitive Astros fans are that it gets brought up. But, look, in, in, in the history of the White Sox, you still remember what happened in 1919. It hardly means anything relative to 2022. Uh, I personally look at the 2022 Astros and don't think about that, that mark. Uh, what is it, about 80% of the team is gone? Um so I, 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 I think it's quite evident to me and, and most people who follow baseball, there is no connection. 
as Dusty said the first time we went to spring training when he took over as as kind of the guy that's there to, to do damage control, like he'd look around and say, fellas, I wasn't there, you know. Ladies, you can ask all the questions you want. I don't know anything about that <laughs> stuff. So he, he did a good job of, of brushing it to the side. And their play over the last years it reminds everybody that the front office, the scouting, uh, what Gonzalez has been able to do as a as the head scout there and identified Tucker and Bregman, that's impressive. Like this, this doesn't happen to me. It just doesn't happen in baseball. If you're going to look at a team that should have been in four World Series the last six years and had multiple titles, just given the talent level, it's the Dodgers. And that ain't happening. So, you know, the Astros are, there's no question, they're the bar. Uh, they've driven the Yankees bananas. You know, they're, they're ready to they're ready to completely figure out a way to, to do this again and do it differently because they can't beat the Astros. And, you know, that was one of the better teams in baseball. Houston's a dominant team in baseball and has been since that time you referred to and certainly the last handful of years. But I would go into this World Series, and if it comes up, it's not because you're relating the 2022 Astros to that team. It's because it's part of the past. It did happen. I think a lot of folks just want to uh, just dismiss it, you know, like it never existed. Well, well, it did exist, and there are a couple of players that were a part of it, but that's not this 2022 team, and that certainly won't be the focus of, of our coverage, at least at least what I'm hosting. <laughs> Carl, last thing before we let you go. How about some predictions? Who wins this thing? How many games? And who do you think is the MVP of the 2022 World Series? So uh, predictions are so hard. I, I mean, look, I think the Astros are better. Um, I'll answer the question. It could end in four games. It could end in six games. I don't think it goes seven. So if I said it could end in four and it could end in six, I'll say Houston in five. <laughs> and I think one of the biggest things that happened to the Astros this year and certainly recently is the return of the uh, I'm better than most players that put on a uniform every day in Alex Bregman. Like there was a time where he was a bit, uh, he was searching, you know, he was looking. And I remember we did the Astros game. It was actually the day that Vasquez got traded over from the Red Sox and uh, he just moved dugouts. And I I just remember sitting there before the game kind of chatting with him and and saying, you you know, you do remember, like you you are aware, like you're, you're that guy. Like where is, where is he? Where is that? Where is that brashness that I saw at LSU? Where's that dude that would hang out and, and you know, light light up the fields at Alex Box Stadium well after everybody had gone to bed? Where is he? Where's that, that guy that borders on cocky, arrogant, who I know as a player is as good as anybody? And he's, he's, he's sort of returned to that. It's almost like Harper. But those two guys are so dangerous because they're just, to me, as baseball players, Better than most at what they do. They just are, and I'm, I'm glad to see Bregman has that attitude back because I, you know, I think he is that good at third base. I think he's, he's in the same category as the Machados and Arenados, and he's showing it again the same way Harper is reminding everybody. There's a reason he got 330 million, and and there's more to them than just what they do on the field. Harper certainly has shown that, and I'm I'm glad to see Bregman back where I thought he always should be, and. It's a hard game, man. It's really hard. You go through ups and downs, and it's hard to see somebody that talented kind of be searching. And I'm glad he seems to have found whatever it was he was searching for. Carl, we appreciate the time. Thanks so much for a couple minutes. Safe flight here to Houston. We'll see you soon. Carl Ravitch from Baseball Tonight and the voice of Sunday Night Baseball with us there on the HRMP guest line to preview the World Series. Congratulations. You did it. You made it through another one of my videos. Look, if you're a Houston sports fan, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to my channel right now, like this video, plus listen to The Wheelhouse, the show that you just watched on YouTube. You can listen to it on the radio every single weekday from 3 to 7 p.m. on ESPN, 97.5 FM and 92.5 FM.